smokes, man. Did oh. you hear me do the lick? Did you hear I me do the, the lick? lick? I heard it on multiple occasions. And um, <laughs> that is what happens, ladies and gentlemen, when you plug into valve amplifiers with big atmospheric sounds like pretty much, you know, Fender just do. That's what they do. Oh. They make amps that sound big. They just make great amps. Um, Welcome I'm, back to Anderson TV, by the way. If you haven't liked and subscribed already, sorry to interrupt, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell and just click the pop-up banner for more of these uh, Fender-related videos. Yes, so it's 2021, people. The year of great hope. Um, <laughs> and new hope. <laughs> new hope. That's... At last, where have you been? <laughs> Luke Skywalker and all that kind of stuff. Coming back um, to save us all. And uh, we're taking a dive back to 1968. Not quite, was that the summer of love? Or was that 69 or 67? Well, I'm you not would sure. think 69, wouldn't you? Because that's kind of the number you would around about that time. associate with and, that kind of um, stuff. So Fender, if you go back <laughs> into the sort of the, the, the folklore of their amplifiers, you know, you, you've got that sort of tweedy brown face era. Then you've got the sort of the black face era with the silver grill cloth or that, you know. And then uh, later in the 60s, you have this sort of silver panel with the blue writing. And Fender reissue all of those amplifiers. Yeah. But they kind of, they kind of try and stick a little bit more authentic on the sort of the tweed and the and the black face stuff. Careful and then that on word. the yeah on the silver face with the blue writing, they have a little bit more license to kind of tweak those amps to maybe bring them a little more, a little bit more up to date. Yeah. And that's what we're playing with today. So yeah. we've got a '68 Pro Reverb, which mm -hmm. is the, the bigger one here. So we have a 112 combo here, and a. Phenomenal, gonna be a big selling amplifier this one. I just know it. Yeah, the Vibro Champ uh, Reverb Amp. So that's a little 110. Which is just incredible. Um, I, you know, you never, when you get a small amp up, you know, when you when we do videos on small amps, you, you kind of, you expect a smaller sound. You know? You expect something. Not expected, but you... Well, you do. I think you, I think when you think of artists that have had great tones out of small amps, they're all, turned up really loud, quite aggressive, yes. very mid-rangey kind of sounding amps. Yeah. And that's actually not what we got from this, which was, this just sounds like, if you imagine how like a Fender Princeton sounds, it's not a million miles off of that, just smaller. Like yeah. that, not, sorry, it's got just slightly that mid, There was slight mid-range going on, but mm. not in the same way. Why that did you play that lick, Pete, on the Vibra Champ? Because uh, John Mayer played uh, a Vibra Champ blackface one, so that will be an early 60-year one on the solo uh, I just feel like, you know that solo that yeah. he posted on Instagram. And everyone freaked out because oh he did it. He did a tap. Yeah, a tap he did like and a bend. Yeah. And, a, and, a, and, a, and, like, and it just became a massive thing. Yeah. And he's like, "Oh, you! Everybody wondered what I was playing and what amp I was using with this one." And this was this little one. He was like filming his dumble and then straight down to the old uh, to this little guy here with the casinos. And that's. You know, and I remember going, oh my God, that's amazing. So looking at, looking up where they cost it, it's like three grand if you find an old one, you know, really expensive. Um, and they're only five watts. Anyway, let's start, start with, no, go on, see well, let's start well, with this right. one. Let's start with yours. Cause yeah. I, I mean, so the 68 series amps are made in Mexico. So a little bit more affordable than the, the USA made ones. Yeah. Um, in the UK, this is 7.99. So mm -hmm. it's a killer price for a, a valve, you know, a, a decent valve amplifier. Yeah. The VibraChamp is basically, it is a low wattage amplifier, so it's five watts, but it's its like, it's five watts that absolutely easily you could be at a little jam with a microphone in front of it, no problem at all. It's yeah. like five valve watts, good watts. I think you will even be able to do a smaller gig with this. Really? I, I think, because, I mean... I mean, it's, it sounds pretty loud in here. You can see the decibel meter in here. Yeah. Uh, a 10 inch speaker, so it's got a Celestian 10 um, inch... 1030. 1030. It's called. 10.30. What time is it? So 10 about four hours before I've got to go to the dentist. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's got Worked a digital out. reverb, which is kind of crazy. Which I didn't realize because I was I was going, oh, man, it sounds great. And you moved but, it. I moved it and it didn't make the noise. So, and then I read and it says here, Fender Hall Reverb. But but let's be fair, the, the new Fender Tone Master stuff, the digital reverbs in oh. there are just unbelievable. Yeah. Um, I want to say what kind of reverb they are, but I always say convalescence, and I don't mean convalescence <laughs> reverb. Convoluted. Convolution. Convoluted. <laughs> Conversation. Conversation Con reverb. Um, 
And Condescending. It's and, it, and it's obviously got the vibro uh, circuit in it. Oh, yeah, so, so it's got... So let me read this up here. It's a modified vibro champ, 6V6, one output tube, two 12AX7s, uh, custom-made Schumacher's transformer, as we mentioned, 10-inch Celestian, the 1030 uh, speaker, but it's a 3.2-ohm speaker for more bass response uh, than the original 8-inch speaker that was in the original of these. And then tube-driven tremolo as well. I wonder if that's why I've not massively liked the original sort of champs, or not the original, but the other champs, because I'm, I'm not a big fan of the eight inch speaker. Do you remember that we did the video, we did a shootout of small, mm. uh, and we had the little champ, the little, uh, was it a tweed champ, wasn't yes, it? Yes, it was. And it was like, oh, I don't really know about this. And then I got Les Paul out and I went, wallop, and I just went, bosh. And it was, yes. okay, there, but that's what we need. But that extra bass end, that you can get from that. It's such a Fender characteristic thing yeah. for me on an amp. It's okay. what I want from a Fender guitar let's, amplifier is big bass end. Let's show them let's instead of it. keep chatting. So here's a G chord on the neck pickup. On this 60, It's just uh, got instant 50. magic voice of unicorns coming out of it. It does have. I mean, that reverb in here as well. Let me just go up a little bit. You know what I mean? And of course, normal as there's the treble bass uh, reverb, and then you've got the speed of the tremolo, tube driven tremolo. Uh, oh, what, what happens if we put it all the way up with that? Reverb sounds good, doesn't it? It's be, just delicious. That's got to be, for its size, <laughs> that might be one of the best sounding guitar amps I've ever heard. It is for its pretty... Size. For, that, pretty. for that type of tone, which I, you know, you know, you can pop some little bit of overdrive pedal on it just to add a bit of this, but the basic core clean tone, it's yeah. just got everything classic Fender that you'd want about it at and that again, kind of volume. And this is not an expensive, this is a player series telecaster, the 75th, uh, 75th anniversary. anniversary. So yeah. it's not a super duper expensive guitar into an amp that is 800 quid. I mean, you know. Can we hear the tremolo circuit? Okay, please? so the tremolo. So you got your your treble. I'm running about, you know, six and five there. So. It's enough bass in there. Uh, treble. It's enough in there if you want it. You know. So it's really lovely. I always like Fender. EQs like that because it's kind of impossible to get wrong, aren't they? They're, yeah. not, they're not insane amounts of change as you change not at the, all. The, not the at settings. all. Let's try this, uh, and uh, you can get an optional two-button foot switch which like, allow you like this one. Yeah, Could, which allows you to do the tremolo circuit and the reverb in and out. So it doesn't come with you have to buy it. You can, you can probably use another one. It doesn't have to be that one. I, I, would, I would assume. But, Who knows? But it looks cool. It's it the coolest cool, switch ever. It? Okay, so here is the tremolo. It's interesting. It hasn't, it hasn't quite got the cleanness and the headroom of something like a Deluxe or the Pro Reverb. No, you can hear it's five has. watts. It's got that little bit of hair on it, which, to be honest with you, some people pay hundreds of pounds to buy distortion pedals to do that. Yeah. And it's kind of, but that is a characteristic. But if you and let me demonstrate that really quickly by putting it on the uh, neck position, mm -hmm. uh, and then go. <laughs> Um, 
that's when you get, if you put the tremolo in. And lots of reverb. That's like a proper surf. Sorry, I'm interrupting you there, so, but it well, sounds great. It's just such great. an iconic sound of that yeah, yeah. era. Imagine, imagine all those songs if Fender hadn't made amps that sounded like that and didn't do vibra didn't do the tremolo circuit and didn't do that reverb. They just anyway. It sounds can I delicious. Hear, do you want to hear? Well, I want to hear two things actually. Yeah. One is normally the second input uh -huh. is a slightly different tone. It's normally like a padded kind of input just to add a little bit of headroom in, so a little bit quieter. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's um, let's just turn it up here to seven, the magic number seven. You might notice I'm shaking the neck on the guitar to get a different kind Somebody of Somebody asked you, didn't they, on Instagram, Pete, why do you shake the neck of the guitar when you play? And I, I just described it as, you know, there is, if you, how many McDonald's restaurants is there in the world? About 35,000 or 300, I mean, I mean, yeah. thousands. There's as many ways of re doing a brass on your guitar as there is McDonald's restaurants around the world. And that's one of them. 30, this one. That's a video. The 35,000 different vibrato <laughs> techniques. But no, I, I think we were saying it's like you know, for people that people that no, don't know to about listen, vibrato. You know, I mean, most people see it. You know, that there's there's people classical vibrato or BB King where it's like there's the side not a lot side. of string movement, but where the fingers movement. There's vibrato where the, the string physically moves, and there's vibrato where the guitar moves. And then in it's, between all of that as yeah. well, you can do vibrato pressing the guitar. The, the, just by pressing the strings up and down, yeah. you know, there's so, some hot, the, and then that's you can do why. slow. You can do that one where you go, play a lick, and then in the end note, don't play vibrato. Now that's... Don't do vibrato. Try that at home, because I mm. bet you're going to go, because that's funny, one of those somebody, things. Somebody, I was talking to someone on, who DM'd me on Instagram going, mm. and I was saying, I find that, I find it, I find not doing vibrato is harder. And when I listen to recordings of myself playing back, I, I overdo the vibrato and it's very difficult. I think I'm, I m have to make more of a consci e conscious effort to not do vibrato yeah. than make an effort. But when you hear someone sing, I quite like it when they hold the note for a few seconds and then, and then go into yeah. vibrato. And I think that's- It's like a fingerprint, man. It's like a fingerprint. Yeah. Anyway, when you, yeah. sorry, can we hear this? So, anyway, so what does this so, input two sound like? Is, it, yeah. is there a bit more headroom? Oh, it sounds good. It does. And yeah, here's one. Thing. It's more subdued, isn't it? It's yeah, more. It's it, cleaner. It's cleaner, yeah. So I'm going to go in here because I'm going to just see, take some of that drive down. And then I've got some pedals as well. Now we are, we are at it. So I've got a tube screamer. Oh, this a proper tube screamer. decibel meter there but i'm my guess is that you absolutely could do a little club with little, that little club you you'll probably struggle when when but it'll be fine you know it'll it'll, it'll sound in a certain sort of way and uh, it's a little bit of a uh, aqua puss as well i've got the whole john mayer set up here today there's a bit of slap back It's you good say enough. you've got the whole John Mayer set up, but you very rarely see him playing a Telecaster, do you? No, it's very rare. There I was saw, a, I saw him playing yeah. like an original, like a you know butterscotch. Black yeah, I saw guard. that. Yeah, uh, but he was young then. 
Yeah. So anyway, anyway, what don't you like about the telecasters, John? Yeah, it's because of, hey, well, I'm saying you need to make a. Uh, is he just not good enough? Yet? Is it that is. what it is? <laughs> is? He just hasn't reached that level where he can. You need he to do. do a, the telly. You need to do a telly, man. You need to do anyway, a telly. Anyway, come on. Anyway, so, so um, that sounds. Are you gonna? You gotta no, put no, your I clon d- over. I the top don't know. Just I just to... got the, a bit of a clock. Reverb. It's got that. Uh, that it's, just, ah, ah, it's wicked. Yeah. So look. Anyway, move check, on. <laughs> check the links oh, below for more information about the new wow, uh, 68 Vibra Champ Reverb. That's lovely. I, you know, my Mystic Meg prediction for 2021 is that will be one of the biggest selling amps that Fender have ever made. I, I think, think that so. ticks so many boxes. Yeah. Anywho. Anywho. Um, it has a bigger brother. It has a Pro Reverb. This is 40 <laughs> watts. That's a lot. So I almost kind of see this as like. Almost like half a twin. It's almost like someone took a 212 80 watt twin and just cut it in half, kind of. Half a twin. Still a single yeah. channel amplifier with the two inputs and a bright switch. Um, we have now treble middle and bass. Oh. Uh, we've now got a proper tube driven spring reverb. And again, we've got the vibrato circuit on the end here. Um, I'll turn my pedals off. At the be- in that beginning jam, I had like a delay. And a, and a little bit of gain from a Dane, Dane from a over the top. Uh, and I'm um, I'm using one of the new Naventa P90 loaded strats, which I really, really like. And half of me wonders whether I should change back to a normal strat, but m- maybe we'll uh, do something in a jam at the end. Yeah. That is so, you know, on the money, what you expect when you plug into a Fender valve amplifier. Yep. Big clean tones, lots of bass end, big reverb. Um, and I've just got every, well, no, I, I haven't gone totally flat here. I've got the reverb completely, sorry, the treble exactly flat at five, the bass at like five and a half, and the middle at um, four. four. So it's like, a, it's like a very slightly happy face. Um, and I've got the reverb quite low. I mean, the, the, it's very quick on these amplifiers for the reverb to become a bit overwhelming, so. It's just a great sound. Um, and I've got the volume at sort of two and a half. I mean, there's tons and tons of volume here. 40 watts, all tube. This will get you plenty of uh, power for a, a little gig. What they have done though is replaced the traditional speaker. I'm guessing these would have had a Jensen or something in them originally, but this now has a Celestian uh, cream back, but the Neo version. So again, we're in keeping with this more sort of modern um, trend of moving towards slightly lighter weight amplifiers. So still yep. fairly heavy because it's a valve amp, big transformer in it, but the speaker is a lot lighter. Two 6L6s, three 12AX7s and two 12AT7s. Oh. Crikey, you've got five preamp tubes in this. Um, Pushing about, the boat out. It talks about the rectifier sag being built into the power transformer. I don't even know what that means, but uh, there you go. Um, <laughs> Somebody will comment below. It's got the, the Schumacher transformers in it. Mm. Um, well. And uh, what else have we got here? The spring reverb I mentioned, uh, the tube driven uh, vibrato, which I mentioned. Um, the 68 styling and the foot switch and a cover comes with it now. Ye oldie dust covers don't get enough love. Um, That's so let's because nobody little, gets them out anymore. <laughs> yeah, we'll have a little bit of a play around with um, what we can do with this. So brightness switch on and off. Brightness switch on is definitely the more Fender classic. Uh, and again, we've got the two inputs. So let's see what the second input does here. It sounds quieter to me. So. Yeah, um, more subdued. 
Yeah, we can put big bass end in, big reverb in if we want oh, to. Oh, let's have some of that. That tank, um, man, you can just hear the spring. Yeah, I know, it's just, it's, it's what's wrong, I mean, it's, I don't know where you'd use this other than those kind of big atmospheric intros. I think also a spring reverb is a it. certain, it's a certain kind of person that uses spring reverb. It's not a, it's not like a... Well, because they're tube driven as well, there's sometimes you can almost hear that extra level of kind of hair that comes in via the tubes. You're talking a lot about um, hair on stuff well, like this today. You have got a dirty mind, Mr. Is, Pete. Um, <laughs> uh, Just too good. Isn't that lovely? Um, what else can I show you on here? I had some pedals for that original bit, so I had this drive sound. So, what I was, what I liked about that sound at the beginning was that I, what I was trying to do was play really, really softly. and try and get oh. that dynamic on the, I actually had a, that delay on here as well, didn't I? Is that so the Dane? That's the Dane Oof. and uh, a tape echo from my Specular Tempest. But And you, I oh, that just awesome. love that you can go from so clean. It's just, I, 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 I don't know when eventually guitar players will kind of just go, ah, digital is fine, I'll just use that all the time now. But for me, there's just still something that puts the hairs on the back of my neck every time I plug into a nice tube amplifier. I don't know. Uh, there's, a feel, there's a feeling in it, man. You can, you know, mm. it's the tools. You need to have more mm. tools to do. You can't, I keep saying the same thing every time. Mm. Just watch another video. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 still kind of, I still kind of feel that, that I probably would still get those hairs on the back of my neck with, with a digital setup if it was a fairly big speaker and quite loud in the room. But so often when you're playing with that sort of digital stuff, you're hearing it through some studio monitors and, and it just doesn't, Give me the it's not tingly the feeling. No, the same. it's not the same thing, man. But, it's um, it's so but these a, are cool. How much is that then? Thirteen forty nine. Okay. So, so there that's, is that's quite obviously dear. there's a there's a there is an amp a couple of amps obviously in between. So the Princeton and the Deluxe would normally sit in between these two. That's true. So you yeah. don't have to go from like seventeen ninety nine up to thirteen forty nine. You have got you know a sort of a step upwards every hundred or two hundred odd pounds or so. Yeah. But this is you know forty watts is kind of like that's definitely. A, a gigging, one hundred percent. One hundred percent. I mean, nice I room just, for pedals as well. That sounded great with the day. I don't know man. what else have I got here. I mean, I, this it's so much fun. Funnily enough, I mean, I've been using the little Boss Katana in um, Facebook videos a lot, and I, and I, it still kind of blows me away how good that amp sounds for the price. But it, but my pedal board sounds so much better <laughs> through a more expensive valve amplifier. Of course it's, it does. It's, it makes me wanna.
This is more the sound, this. That's more the sound, isn't it? Anyway, I just... We, we're rambling now. We're this so is, we're, rambling. We're, we're, yeah. This is basically when... It's the best part of working at Anderson's and doing these videos, basically, is when just gear that you just go, oh, yes, that's what I want. You get to play... It just sounds great. So well done, Fender, on these amplifiers. Yeah. So here we go. So Pete and I are just going to jam out with a couple of different guitars now so you can get a vibe of what the guitars sound like, what the amps, sorry, sound like with something with some humbuckers on it and something with some single coils on it. But uh, yes, just want to say thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe and hit that notification bell if you'd like to know when new videos come out. Uh, but yes, well done Fender. Links below if you want to find out more. Maybe even buy one, who knows. Um, and uh, yes, let's jam out Pete.